He gets to play video games all day. Running the household. River threatened the safety of my field crew. I swear to God, I'm going to slip their throat. Certain things trigger him. Mr. Trigger, meet Mrs. Trigger. Whenever I get mad, then they kind of back off. You throw a tantrum and she leaves, basically. This kid is so entitled, it's incredible. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. If you have a teenager, you have my sympathy. No. <laughs> you know sometimes it's hard to get them out of bed, especially for school. But imagine if the only way to get him out of the door was with a police escort. Well, that's what my guests Angie and Hunter say they faced with their 15-year-old son, Rivers. But they could only call the cops so many times, and now he's been kicked out of his fourth school in two years. Take a listen to a little of Angie's struggle. Rivers, stop it. What are you acting like an animal for? You're f***ing dumb. That's called consequences, Rivers. I can clean my f***ing room, bitch. Charming. <laughs> Rivers' aunt Cindy wrote into the show saying that she is afraid for the safety of the rest of the family because there are two other children in this home. Now, she says Rivers has zero respect, zero discipline, and suffers zero consequences and throws tantrums like a toddler when he doesn't get his way. She says that her sister Angie and, and husband Hunter need severe help with their parenting skills because Rivers has been the boss of the family for too long, and he is just completely out of control. Take a look. I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with my 15-year-old son. I cannot let him see me have this phone or he'll rip it out of my hand and throw it across the room. <laughs> We're scared to death of him. <laughs> we don't know what Rivers is capable of. It's almost as if he wants to use the most hurtful words that he can. Bitch! If I cry, he'll say, shut up, you Shut up! Uh, you mean? You just die. Stop crying all the time. He'll say, leave me alone, you slut. You dumb blonde. Quit bothering me, you bitch. I get called a bitch a million times a day. Go kill yourself. Go sit in the middle of the road and let a car run you over. My son called me a f See, I'll never have any social life because he. I went up to him and I said, what did you say? He said, I called you a f You think I like men? I can knock your f teeth in your mouth. Don't you ever call me a f Do it. And he went, I'd love to see you try. He has slammed the door in my face and caused me to have a bloody eye. And his reasoning was, you shouldn't have your face in the door. He's pushed me. Uh, onto the hood of the car. Uh, he's pushed me through his closet doors. I fell down and he was pointing at me. He said, don't with me. I know how to fight. He's 6'2", he's 15, he's physically bigger than me. I have completely lost control of my son. Now, Angie and Hunter have stopped forcing Rivers to go to school. They just gave up. They're just waiting, I guess, for the courts to step in. Take a look. Rivers started missing school consistently about two years ago. You need to go to no, school. No, stop pouting. Right, you're not a f you're not a fragile little kid. Rivers last went to school 27 days ago. So next year he should be in the 11th grade, but he's going to be in ninth grade again. Rivers, no. You got to go to school. No. Law. No. I have called the cops five times to try to get Rivers just to go to school. And we'll call the cops. I am no longer calling the cops on Rivers because he is not afraid. No, no. cops are not dumb. Yes, they're so dumb. Oh my God, shut up. He has said, I don't care about the cops. 
He lives in his room. He's been living there for three weeks now, locked up like a caged animal, and comes out to eat and then goes back to his room and locks himself up. He plays video games from midnight till 7 in the morning, and then he sleeps from 7.30 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon. We have tried punishing him. If I take River's cell phone away as a consequence, I better be able to run fast, because when he catches me, he takes my wrist as hard as he can and just tries to rotate it as if just trying to break your bone in half. We have thrown our hands up in the air, and we, we call truce. Nothing works. It's called consequences, Rivers. I can clean my room, bitch! So we just don't discipline anymore. Nothing makes a difference. It makes life tolerable. I am very worried that Rivers could harm me or my husband. And I think he would, and he wouldn't be remorseful. It's like we're going down this long journey with no road map, and we don't know where to turn. It sounds to me like you guys have just given up. Uh, that's one thing that I have resigned myself to when I decided to have children, that I would never, ever give up. I, I just feel helpless at times. He passed me in height and size, and he's so brazen, and he doesn't have boundaries. He doesn't have any limits. I do, as a father. I'm not going to cross certain lines. Well, if you had really drawn the line in the sand when he was four, five, or six, this would be a lot easier than it is right now when you're saying, okay, listen to me. Yes, sir. Right? But you said you would never give up. I went, I read every word that you say. I listen to a lot of it. I went through and pulled out a lot of terms that I think seeing in one place might mean something to you. Okay. No consequence. Doing everything that he says he needs unable to follow through, giving up, lenient, just let it happen. I mean, all of these are just, suggest to me that you've caved. The giving up came whenever Rivers became so violent and we became, a fear, you know, fearful of him. So in order to keep peace for my four-year-old and my 12-year-old, when these moments get more intense, I just don't know how to control him, but I can make it go away for the moment. And I know, I know when I'm doing these things, I know, Dr. Phil, that I'm making a mistake, but I, if, if it went all the way with he and I, we would be in a fist fight on the floor and I will never hit my son. So let me get this right. Y'all are here to defend what you're doing then. You're not here to change it. No, I'm no. here to change. You're, defend, you're spending your time defending it. You said, no, 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 there's a context for this. I'm doing it to keep the others safe. I know it's I wrong, but I'm keeping the peace. We're desperate. If it's us, we need help, but we also need help with Rivers because we are fearful of our son. And I, and I apologize to it is both. make excuses. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, yeah. look, I get it. I've got two kids. Yeah. yeah. I, I've, Robert, we've raised two boys. And, and I can tell you, th these are our two boys, Jay and Jordan. Boy. And I remember Jay, he's the one on the right. I, I, you'll remember this. When Jay was four or five, we were driving on the highway and he was in the back seat and he said something really smart aleck to his mother. And I stopped, I put it in park, and I turned around. And I looked him in the eye and I said, don't you ever speak to my wife that way again. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, and he heard that and he'll, he'll tell you that today, right? Yes, yes. You're letting him speak to your wife like she's some kind of tramp on the street. How, how does that work? You know, I never heard those videos. I never heard them in person. I wasn't there when he did that. He slowly started talking that way to his mother without me, and she had to prove that he was saying these things. I would believe her, but I just, I heard the video and couldn't believe it. What are you acting like an animal for? You're up. I'm what? I get to do this week and I'm not able to do. That's right. It's called Consequences, Rivers. I can clean my room, bitch. That's your wife. And, and he usually uh, does it when Hunter's not around, and I've gotten to where I record it, because Rivers will completely deny it. Now, Rivers threatened the safety of my field crew before arrival. Listen to this. I don't want to do this! Oh, God! No, that dumb crew come, I swear to God, I'm going to slit their throat! They've got a huge, well-oiled machine. I'm running away. I'm not... I don't, I don't feel like being recorded today. I don't feel like going to Los Angeles and going on a show tomorrow. This, do you know how retarded that sounds? The problem, one of the things that bothers me is the ignorance 
that he's showing. He's using offensive and derogatory terms. He uses them because he knows how much I hate them. How much them. we hate it. Well, he wants to hurt me so bad sometimes, and, and the way he does it is with words, because I won't engage him in any other way. Well, when we come back, we're going to find out why Rivers' aunt did write in and says the problem with this family started when Rivers was just one year old. And she'll tell us what happened, and I'm going to tell you what I think about all that when we come back. Rivers knows how to manipulate him. Trust me, trust me. He's controlling. He's controlling you. If there had been discipline from the beginning, they wouldn't be in this situation that they're in now. And later, what gives you the right to call your mother a bitch and a slut? Whenever I get mad or show that I'm, like, really upset, then they kind of back off. I tell him I'll pay rent. If I want to come to that room, I will. Yeah, you're really tough. <laughs> on an all-new Dr. Phil. My son's behavior is out of control and downright scary. Are they here to help their son? He crashed his grandfather's car. He's killed animals. This is not normal eight-year-old behavior. Or to defend themselves. Have you seen him punch the puppy? I have not. Todd does not take blame. She's here thinking she's a movie star. He thinks he's perfect. Todd, your mom named you Todd, not God. That's tomorrow. River's behavior has been very unpredictable for a very long time. He's driving down the road, he'll grab my steering wheel and yank it and get on his back and try to kick the windshield out. Rivers has broken my four-year-old's toy guitar because he said it was a piece of crap. Rivers throws temper tantrums. When he was like 14 years old, he actually got in his closet and kicked around like a toddler. Rivers has major impulse control problems. Angie and Hunter say their son Rivers controls the household with his unruly behavior, but for some reason, he's polite to his Aunt Cindy. Now, she says his anger is always directed at the same people. Take a look. Rivers has his parents living in fear. He said if anyone walks in there, he's going to slit their throats. Angie and Hunter let him rule the house. He is definitely king. Rivers doesn't go to school with zero consequences. He wants friends over. They come over. He wants something purchased. It's purchased. His life is perfect. <laughs> and Hunter are desperate for proof that Rivers still loves him. They buy him what he wants. They're trying to earn his affection. Rivers knows how to manipulate him. Trust me, trust me. He's controlling. He's controlling you. If I were Rivers' mother, there is no way this would happen. He would not have the computer, the phone, the musical equipment. I'm not seeing I think he's a if there had been discipline from the beginning, they wouldn't be in this situation that they're in now. They don't stick to their consequences. I have...
five children of my own, and I've never seen a child act like this. Rivers is very much a chameleon. He is sweet to me. I ask him to do something, and he'll do it. His anger and aggression is reserved for his parents. I know that he's hurt my sister, and I know that he's hurt his father. As bad as things are now, things could get a lot worse. It's terrifying. I don't know what level he'll go to next. I'm afraid that he could kill them. Okay, Cindy, I'm glad you wrote in. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad to meet you. Thank you. Why write in now instead of a year ago or wait a year longer? It had elevated, I felt like. If he gets to 16 and he's given a car, then all bets are off. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right, by the way. And let me say this. You're teaching him how to treat you. People do what works, and we teach them how to treat us. So if, if they do A and they get a reward, then they're going to repeat A. Mm -hmm. If they do B and they don't get a reward, then they're not going to repeat B. You, you repeat those behaviors that you get a payoff for, right? Yes, sir. You're right. I mean, that's exactly. the I mean, I agree with that. Th it's we just that simple. So, so why? So scared he... of him now that we feel like nothing would work because we're too afraid of him. The situations. W but you're rewarding bad behavior. But I feel like, you know, you know, no consequences and all that, I feel like we've also kind of protected our family from how terrible it really was. You two are child abusers. One of the definitions of abuse is failing to protect children from abuse and danger. You have two younger children in the home that are subjected to this young man. You are failing to protect them by allowing him to be the way he is in that home. That, by definition, is abuse. He's, he's actually violating those children, particularly the 12-year-old, correct? Yes, he's not as violent as he used to be, but yes, he has attacked him in the past. He's abusing those children. You're allowing that to happen. You can't do that. He's you cannot do that. That has to stop today. Yeah. He loves his four-year-old. Yeah. I'm sure he loves his mother, too, yeah. but he calls her bitch. And, and you cannot subject him to that. now. So we can agree that he's out of control. Yes. Can we also agree with this? It is situation specific. Very. There should be two things you could conclude from that. We've endorsed his behavior on a private level. When he's around us, we've endorsed it by not following through. But God, it's just so intense. You take his computer away through. and he'll tear up your house. It is oh so my God. intense. <laughs> I, I was never given a parent roadmap when okay, I started. Okay, you're getting one now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, look. Here are the two things I want you to conclude from that. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's situation specific, number one tells you that he has the ability, it is within his behavioral repertoire, to behave appropriately. I'm sorry, but you just don't flip on and off mental illness when you go from one room to another. Wish you could, but it doesn't work that way. Correct? He was more stable on all the medications that they had him on. I will say that. But he won't take them anymore. <laughs> Please acknowledge what I just said. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Don't change the subject and talk about medication six years ago. Do you acknowledge the fact that if this was, in fact, an ingrained mental illness, he wouldn't be able to flip it on and off at will. I agree. Well, you're educating me because I, I, thought that, uh, I thought that the neuroses of it was that they had triggers and certain things trigger him. And I, you know, I... That's my second point. Yes, sir. Mr. Trigger, meet Mrs. Trigger. <laughs> but we feel like we wouldn't go to school, so we put him in psychiatric hospital. Is it just me? What I see here is a spoiled brat kid who gets rewarded for bad behavior. And later, you can't be proud of the way you treat your mother. At times, you've been very cruel. What are you so angry about? Even at a young age, Rivers was always acting out in school and getting in trouble. He flooded his art class by plugging up the sink. And one time, he cut a kid's backpack open, and all the books came out. He drew a racist cartoon, got sent to the office, and he got suspended. He was always a bully. Rivers has always been defiant. And even then, Angie and Hunter wouldn't discipline him. 
He behaves this way with you two for a couple of reasons. Number one, you trigger it. And number two, he knows it works. He can get away, he can grab your wrist and twist it, wrestle your phone out of your hand, call you a bitch and slam the door, and he knows there's not one consequence gonna come from it, true? True. He doesn't go to school and he gets to play video games all day. We agree, but we feel like, you know, having the cops come and put him in the back of the cop car and get him to school, and he wouldn't go to school, so we put him in psychiatric hospital, and we've had him on medication and counseling. Is and it just me? No. <laughs> Rivers controls them with when they would call the police to come get him and take him to school. Rivers figured out real quick that if he started using the catchphrase, I'll run away, well, then the phone calls to the police stopped. Now he realizes I run away doesn't, you know, he's up to I'll kill myself. And so he knows to he's up elevated the, ante the threat to threaten them to maintain control. I don't know that it's appropriate to fight uh, the war against mental illness with the same quiver of arrows that you do a normal child. I, I think there's certainly behavioral dysfunction, but I don't know that there's mental illness here. Uh, all signs point to no from my standpoint, but I don't I'm know that. Know I, haven't, that. I haven't diagnosed him yet, but I see no indication whatsoever of mental illness here. What I see here is a spoiled brat kid who gets rewarded for bad behavior. That's what I know. Now, there may be mental illness on top of that. There may be mental illness on top of that, and that is yet to be determined, but He's I, had psychological evaluations at all the hospitals, and they've all said the same things. No matter what I'm saying to the two of you, you're saying, yeah, but. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, look, he's not going to school, and he gets to stay home and play video games. Yeah, but. I mean, we call the police, and they say he's not a criminal, so we just got to let him play the video games. Really? No, I say, no, look, no. you're rewarding bad behavior when he gets away with calling you names and twisting your wrist. Yeah, but, I mean, he's bigger than me. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. No matter what I say, you're saying, yeah, but. He calls you names, he attacks you physically, he's disrespectful, he does not perform, and you're allowing that to happen. True or false? True. True. And his behavior is situation specific. It happens when there are folks requiring him to do something he doesn't want to do. Yes. That's either teachers, or parents. He's got a very immature level of problem solving and problem recognition. He's very immature right now, mm -hmm. and you're rewarding immature behavior. True or false? That's true. true. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, what you should be thinking right now is okay, Baldy, so what do we do instead? <laughs> Okay, now, he had a seizure when he was one. He was two. Two. Not febrile, febrile seizure, yeah. Uh, scared the bejeebers out of you. Yes. I carried my son Jay into the operating room at four weeks old. I carried him in. Uh, he's on staff at the hospital and he had to have emergency surgery. Scared me to death. Scared his mother. She ain't over it yet. Yes, it was horrible. And, and you can know. remember me carrying him in there right oh. this second, can you not? <laughs> yes, he was, he had been crying so hard to put that IV in. He's just so tiny and when you were walking down the hall, I could see his little head just still crying and shaking. I, I do understand and it makes you handle that child from the beginning differently than you would handle him if that hadn't happened. Little differences real early on become big differences later on. Your job as a parent is to prepare him for the next level of life. Yes, sir. And you're not doing that. No. And we need to start doing that. Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you, Absolutely. it's not even almost too late. That's the good news. Thank you. It's not even almost too late. Well, we're going to meet him. Uh, we've been talking about him. So the 15-year-old boss of this house, who's getting ready to get fired, uh, <laughs> is getting ready to come out. I've got some very important questions for Rivers right after we come back.
My mom definitely nags me the most until she gets what she wants. I don't like hearing the same things over and over and over, and it just kind of bugs me. When it comes to like getting mad, something happens, I'll just let it all out. I just explode on him. I want to back off. Let me do things on my own. Well, Angie and Hunter say their 15-year-old son sends fear running through the veins of his entire family when he turns violent. And although he's respectful to his Aunt Cindy, Rivers wants his parents to understand why he doesn't need to play by their rules in order to play music professionally. Take a look. I do have conflict with my parents because I'm not going to school. It just doesn't feel fair to me because that's like my choice. I just feel like it's not going to help me in my life. My mom is very overprotective, like a lifeguard status. She always wants to like be in your room 24-7. It can be too much. My mom definitely nags me the most until she gets what she wants. I don't like hearing the same things over and over and over, and it just kind of bugs me. When it comes to like getting mad, something happens, I'll just let it all out. I just explode on them. I know I shouldn't have done it, but I just know it all builds up from like a week. I call my dad a redneck and he hates that. I've said dumbass. I'm more of a alone type of person. I'm happiest in my room because that's where everything I love is like my guitars, microphones, online gaming, friends. When I want to be alone in my room, that's my time. I want to back off, just lay off, and let me do things on my own. They're good parents. They just don't understand me. Well, Rivers, good to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Why are you not going to school? Um, because I just, I've taken music as a passion. It's just like, school just seems like it's not doing anything for me. And how were you planning on making a living? I wanted to be a musician. Do you have an agent? No, sir. Do you have a manager? No, sir. Uh, do you have a demo reel? No, sir. So you're not going to school, and you're not pursuing a music career, you're just playing music for yourself because it's your passion? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. As of now. What gives you the right to call your mother a bitch and a slut? It's just like when something's going wrong, I just don't know what I'm doing. Are you mentally ill? No, sir. Would you say you manage people by intimidation? Whenever I get mad or show that I'm like really upset, then they kind of back off, it seems like. Like my mom, like when she comes in my room a lot and she's like nagging me about something and I just let out and it seems like she she knows that like it's really bothering me. Yes, I tell him I pay rent. If I want to come to that room, I will. Yeah, you're really tough. <laughs> you throw a tantrum and she leaves. For a short period of time, then she'll come back. And then you throw another tantrum and she leaves again. Basically. Here, here are some of the things, according to your mother, that you say. Shut the blank up, you blank. Shut the hell up, blank damn you. You're tough. You're not a little blank. Stop crying. I'm tired of you acting like this lately, dumb blank. Stop crying all the time and take your medicine. Stop pouting. You're not a blank. You're not a fragile little kid. I got your phone, blank damn. You're blank dumb. I can clean my blank room, bitch. Go kill yourself. Go sit in the middle of the road and let a car run over you. Th those were so long ago. Which... Well, let's listen to some that are fairly recent then. Rivers, you are not allowed to make it'll be like that to my phone. Shut the f up, you all I did was turn you around and take your phone. Shut the hell up. Damn, you're tough. You're not a little fuck. Stop crying. I'm tired of you acting like this lately. Me? Yes, dumbass. Stop crying all the time. You need to go to no, school. Shut up. Stop pouting. You're not a you're not a fragile little kid. I got your phone. Damn. Seriously? Rivers, meet Mr. and Mrs. Trigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wish that you had the ability to treat me with a little bit more respect, but apparently I haven't taught you to respect me. I respect them when I when everything when you is want fine. To. When you're getting when something, you're getting your way. Everything you want. When you're getting everything you asked for. When you don't have to go to school. When everything's being handed to you on a silver platter, you treat them wonderful. All I've ever asked for was not to go to school. So I can... 
You're just saying there's nothing at school for me, so I'm not going. Yes, sir. There's nothing that I want to do that school will do for me. Your life's getting ready to make a really dramatic change for the better. an all-new Dr. Phil. My son's behavior is out of control. He crashed his grandfather's car. He's killed animals. This is not normal eight-year-old behavior. That's tomorrow. Why do all the kids in the world have to go to school but you why are you entitled to not go to school I really I just want to know what's special about you that you get to not go to school I'm not the only one that doesn't go to school but I'm one of the ones that don't go to school because I have something that I want to do instead there's nothing that I want to do that at school will do for me well that's not up to you it's the law and you're a child and those decisions are made by adults and you know, here's your attendance record for the current school year. They've held school for 37 days, you've missed 24. So what entitles you to tell your parents you're not gonna do what they tell you to do? I just don't listen. I just, it's just not what I wanna do. I have a son that is a musician and he wanted to be a musician. And I said, great, you get your college degree and I'm all in, I'm all in in your music career. And he did, and I was. And he makes an obscene amount of money. Yes, sir. But he did that first. And you know what? It's proven to be very, very important for him because he's involved in contracts and managing other bands as well. And But you don't have the ability to see that right now because you, you can't see in advance. Mm -hmm. So people older than you can, and you're just saying, no, I'm going to... I'm going to do it, and they're allowing that to happen. That's wrong. Uh, I just need to know. So you're just saying there's nothing at school for me, so I'm not going, right? Yes, sir. That's where we are? Yes, sir. And that's what you're going to do next week, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. You can't be proud of the way you treat your mother, are you? No. Are you proud of calling her names? Do you ever feel bad about it right after you do it? I mean, do you think about it when you're in your room by yourself? Yeah, like the day after. What do you say to yourself? I don't say anything. I just think about it. What do you think? Why'd I do it? Mm -hmm. Do you think she loves you? Yes, sir. You think your dad does? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They've been pretty kind to you, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. But you haven't been kind back at times you've been very cruel what are you so angry about how since i'm not going to school or like just how i'm treated different than my brother sometimes like my brothers will get a lot more chances than me that's like a big deal like my brother like my brother will do really bad stuff and do the same things i do and scream and cuss and everything but it seems like since i'm not going to school which i understand but like it just seems like that's Something I want to do is not go to school and pursue music, but it seems like I get treated different for it. You got any questions for me? Because I'll answer anything you want to answer, because your life's getting ready to make a really dramatic change for the better. <laughs> if, you, if your parents listen to me, it's going to make a dramatic change for the better, and, and you're going to love it. You're going to hate it at first, probably, but you're going to love it, ultimately. Okay, well, coming up, we're going to find out about the desperate act uh, this happily married couple has considered to keep their other children safe. We'll be right back. The number one show in daytime is taping now. All we need is you. You're going to be in the Los Angeles area and want to watch a live taping of the Dr. Phil Show? Call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Or visit drphil.com. Tickets are free, and I hope to see you soon. 
I would be lying if I said that this has not affected my marriage. We've even had a plan of me living in an apartment separate from the man that I love, just so we can have peace for everybody. It's like being held hostage in your own home. And as long as you do what he says, nobody gets hurt. Either me and Rivers would live together and Hunter would raise the other two, or vice versa. Just so that someone could have all their attention on Rivers and the other two could live in a peaceful environment. For some reason or another, we've got the tail wagging the dog. We, we've got a kid here that is determining things that a kid should not be determining. Do you think when he's 35 and he's not a high school graduate and he's got an exciting career in fast food industry that he's going to look back and say, you know, wh 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 why, why am I here? How can we physically pick him up and take him? I mean, he's... That's, that's, the, that's the paper tiger default that you go to is... How do we do that physically? How do we wrestle him to school? It's not about that. It's about understanding that you have, he's just sat here and told you, yes, I scream at my mother because it works. Did you hear him say it? I did. He said, I, she comes in and I scream at her, she'll leave. And she'll come back and I'll yell some more, she'll leave again. I mean, he did, he's, he, he just said, he hasn't been listening to the first part of the show. He just told you what we've been talking about. So Rivers, when we go home next week and I say, Rivers, get up, it's time to go to school. And I don't come in 10 times, you're going to hop up out of bed, get dressed and go to school, right? No, he's already told you that. He said, no, he's not going to school. So then we're in the same situation. No, you're, you might be right now, but you're not going to be. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to do two things. One's going to be, he's going to say, I'm going to run away. And you know what I would tell him? is don't run too fast because there ain't nobody chasing you. That's, that's what I tell them. Um, and he's going to think he's going to run, him, he thinks he's going to run fast, but you, yeah. he, he can't run very fast with his drum set, piano, and guitar on his back. <laughs> but those are all going to be at home, and he's going to be out there looking around, and it gets like really boring and really cold, and, and that doesn't work. And he's going to say, well, okay, then life's not worth living. I'll just kill myself. Okay, if that happens, then you you got to do a 5150 and put him in the psych ward and see how he likes that. We've done that, and they kicked him out and, in seven days. I mean, And then you put him right back in. We did, and they kicked him out in another Okay, yeah, days. but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. You don't understand. This is a war of attrition, and you've got to be willing to win the war of attrition. Up. We're not giving well, up. Oh, yes, you well. are, because you're telling me whatever I say, you're saying, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you two options here, and uh, you, you're going to choose from those two options or pass one of the two. But I'm going to tell you what I recommend, but it's your decision. If it works, it's going to be because you made it work, not me. If it goes off in the ditch, it's going to be because you ran the ditch, not me. It's your decision. You're going to have to own it. I'm going to tell you what they are right after the break. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. I, I've written a book called Family First, and I talk in Family First about commando parenting. And I'm going to give you guys a copy of this book before you leave. And uh, for all of you at home, I'm going to take the commando parenting section. I'm going to put it on the Internet for you so you don't even have to buy the book. Um, but this is something that requires total immersion on your part. And with commando parenting, you go back to ground zero. That means it's all gone. His bedroom has a twin bed, sheet, pillow, and a blanket. And that's it. This kid is so entitled, it's just incredible. And if he wants to come out there and, and call you a bitch, 
he's going to be in there with a sheet and a blanket for a long time if he wants to start saying, okay, you know what? Um, you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to realize that they reward good behavior now instead of bad behavior. I'm going to start doing good behavior. Now, I will give you a second alternative. There is a place that I have great confidence in uh, called Turnabout Ranch. And Turnabout Ranch is just what it says. It is a ranch. It is a real working ranch with real values that are taught to create real lasting change. And it combines therapy, academics, and hard work to achieve really powerful results. And they work with students ages 13 to 17 who are struggling with a range of emotional and behavioral issues. And the students learn leadership and teamwork and accountability and responsibility. That's what I have to offer you. That's my advice to you. you you've been very concise and and I know and trust in what you said. I, I, I own up to my part. I would like to take you your generous offer to put my son in that care facility. And I would also like to immediately take care of his room and have it prepared for him as you've suggested when he comes back. While he's gone, you two have a lot of work to do. Yes. I agree, sir. And I will provide that for you as well. Please. Okay. All right. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Turnabout Ranch for offering to help this very deserving young man, uh, Rivers. I think he's lost his way, but it is never too late. And I think he can be an absolute star. Uh, for more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. Tell us what you think. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next time. Thanks. really hard uh, last hour and a half. We are going to convert to commando style parenting, but only after you return from Turnabout Ranch. From here, we're going to get your bag, we're going to go out to the car, and you're going to be headed to Turnabout Ranch. Oh my gosh. I promise I'll change everything. I know this is just like me trying to wiggle out of something, but 